while we're in this beautiful place, our hearts are in Israel. We saw clips of you rallying the nation after the worst terrorist strike, strike on, on American soil. I wonder what, what were your thoughts when you heard that Israel was attacked by Hamas over the weekend? Uh, my thoughts were that uh, we need to support Israel. No ands, ifs, or buts. This is an unprovoked attack by terrorist people willing to kill innocent people to achieve uh, an objective. Uh, Hamas is a political organization. They do not reflect the majority of the Palestinians. And, uh, and don't be surprised if Israel takes whatever action is necessary to defend herself. Uh, and it's going to be ugly for a while. But uh, it's tough. It's tough. And I hope and I'm pretty confident the United States will stand squarely with Israel. You know, going in the neighborhoods of Gaza is going to be tough. And, you know, he's got a, he's got a very seasoned military, but they just called up 300,000 reservists, most of whom probably can't fire a rifle. And to the extent they'd be put in harm's way, it's going to be awfully difficult on the prime minister. But he's got to do what he's got to do. I mean, these... Uh, you're dealing with cold-blooded killers, and you can make all kinds of excuses why they are, but they are. And his job is to protect this, protect this country. And uh, anyway, we'll find out what he's made out of. Among the countries on the axis of evil that you defined during your presidency was Iran. To what extent is Iran responsible for the? Well, I, I don't know. I don't have. I don't get the intelligence anymore. Yeah. Their stated objective is the destruction of Israel. That's what the leaders say. And in, in this world, you got to take what they say seriously. Mm. And, uh, and uh, Iran's been pretty good at using surrogate uh, terrorist groups, Hezbollah being the key one, of course. And th therefore, the idea of using somebody else to achieve their objective doesn't surprise me. Uh, and uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of a hardliner on all this stuff. Uh, but I, I never thought we should try to accommodate Iran any way, shape, or form. I always felt the objective ought to be to prevent them from getting a nuclear weapon, to prevent a, a cataclysmic event in the Middle East. And these are the kind of people that if you show softness, they will take advantage of it. And then we'll see, Benjamin, not, yeah, the United States needs to stand squarely with the president, uh, with uh, Netanyahu. And the administration start off on the right foot, it seems to me. Pretty bold statement, and that's good. And he's gonna take some heat, you know, both parties have got isolationist tendencies, and uh, you know we shouldn't get involved. You know who cares? Well, we should. We should care. And what does the immediate future look like for Israel, in your view? Uh, immediate future doesn't look very bright, <laughs> uh, particularly if you're on the Hamas side. But uh, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be chaotic, and it's going to be look. It's a democracy, and in a democracy, the people's voices matter. And there's going to be a weariness. You watch. The world's going to be, okay, let's negotiate. You know, Israel's got to negotiate. They're not going to negotiate. These people have played, played their cards. Mm. They want to kill as many Israelis as they can. And negotiating with killers is not a, an option for the elected government of Israel. And so we're just going to have to remain steadfast. But it's not going to take long. For people. That's gone on too long. Surely there's a way to settle this through negotiations. Both sides are guilty. My view is one side is guilty, and it's not Israel. 